Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rollers Guild, uh, episode 18 of The Gilded City. We hope you are excited for uh, the next episode in our campaign. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff for the YouTube. Uh, follow us on social media at Rollers Guild DND. We are on Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok. Crazy, I know. Um, also, uh, the podcast version is, as always, available. Um, so make sure you go check that out as well if uh, listening is more your jam than watching. Um, but with all that being said, we'll go ahead and jump right on in. Oh, and we are unfortunately down Octavia tonight. Um, something came up, so she will not be joining us this evening, but she should be back next week. So, um, with you should leave, that, you should leave a comment um, down below saying happy birthday to our fearless uh, dungeon master. Yes, on the date of recording. It yeah, is, it, it's is, today for us. That it was is a bit ago for y'all. That is correct. On the day that we are recording this, it is my birthday. Yes. His 40th Great. birthday. <laughs> He's wise. <laughs> He's yeah, really, don't really die young. 40. My goodness. Baby face. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we are really going to go ahead and jump right into it. Hi everyone, Ben here. Before we get started with the episode proper, I wanted to give you all a quick content warning. I know we don't normally do this sort of thing, but we thought it was important before this particular episode. Today's episode has a lot of discussion and depiction of homelessness, and some of the struggles that accompany homelessness. Now I want to be clear, none of us is an expert in homelessness, nor are we attempting to perfectly portray this issue. But, if discussion of homelessness is something that makes you particularly upset or uncomfortable, we just wanted to give you this quick warning. Also, please take some time to learn about the issue of homelessness in our modern day and real world. If you are able, we would encourage you to donate money, food, clothes items, or anything else to trustworthy organizations who help and advocate for the homeless. Links will be in the description down below. Now, on with the episode. Last time, the party took some time to take care of themselves and some personal business while waiting for the Ovina Bloodkeep case to come to a resolution. Against all odds, it looks like Ovina and the leadership of her company will actually face punishment for their actions. With the Bloodkeep case looking like it will come to a positive resolution, the party reconvenes with freedom to talk about Diego Marivaldi, their next target. <clears throat> um, so, you all, uh, have come together back at Janara's house, sitting around the table enjoying, um, snacks and drinks and all the usual that you expect here. Uh, Freedom has just walked in and said, let's talk about Piero Mar Maribaldi. So. Well, I spent the last to 10 days, um, seeing what I could find about the illustrious head of the Water National Bank of Waterdeep. Unfortunately, there is nothing remarkably obvious as to illegal activities, though 
I came across some troubling rumors, let's say. Uh, well, not even rumors, more of a troubling coincidence. It, we've got two basic pieces of information to start with. We've got the mortgages and we've got Maravaldi's uh, generous giving. What would you all like to hear first about what I've dug up? Generosity. Let's go with that one. Very well. Um, Maravaldi is a large donor to the Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society. Um, while in days past, they were involved in all sorts of other things, they have, in recent years, become concerned with trying to raise up the poor folk of the city, which sounds very nice until, you know, you learn that that raising up comes with requirements such as active worship at, at one of several approved temples and um, such. But that said, they are providing food, and um, relief to uh, the homeless of the city, which is, you know, I, on balance, a good thing, I suppose, you would say, when against the, I mean, against the, the weird religious stuff, right? Like, weird religious stuff, food. Sometimes you listen to weird religious stuff so that you can get food in your stomach. Right. Anyway, all that to say, Maravaldi is a donor to the Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society, and through them has hosted a number of, um, you know, soup kitchens and, and, and bread lines and that sort of thing. With, <clears throat> with that, there are some troubling, I mean, they could be coincidences, of some individuals who attend the food banks run by Maravaldi's money disappearing not long after. It doesn't happen at, ev it doesn't happen with every single Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society charity function, but it does happen fairly frequently at all the ones funded by Maravaldi. Now, this could just be a coincidence because unfortunately, homeless folks slip through the cracks all too often. But it is a troubling coincidence nonetheless, and something that I think is worth looking into. Um, can Bowman merit roll a history check just to see if he remember, remembers not seeing anybody, like his coworkers or people on the street maybe disappearing? Yeah, uh, yeah. Go ahead and make a, make a history check for me. Uh, that was a 17. 17. Um, yeah, Bowman, as a homeless person yourself, I mean, you've, you've heard of the, the Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society, you know, uh, food giving um, opportunities. I'll, I'll, I'll let you make the judgment on if Bowman has ever gone to any of them or not. Um, but you know they are a thing. You know some of the other people who live on the streets in the dock ward. Um, I mean, Bowman mostly keeps to himself, but you've heard things. Um, and you know some people don't love to go to them because of the sermons that are often attached to them about Torm or Helm or, you know, one of any number of deities. But, you know, people gotta do what they gotta do to eat. And so people do go to them. Um, with an 18, I would say that you, you've maybe, you know, there's, there's a handful of people who live on the streets that 
you recognize, I would say, by sight, right? They frequent similar locations and that sort of thing. I would say, you know, sometimes they disappear. That's just, it just happens. Um, you, you know, you never really thought that much of it, but you do know that a couple of the people that have gone missing um, did go to some of those uh, uh, food banks, soup kitchens, bread lines, that sort of thing, um, on occasion. So, again, like Freedom said, it could just be coincidence because homeless people slip through the cracks all the time, unfortunately. But, still. Are these events ever held by Sanctuary's Tavern? Uh, no, not particularly close to Sanctuary's Tavern. Okay. They usually rent out like large um, halls or empty warehouses or that sort of thing um, um, to host these, these sort of events. Um, and right. there's no, there's no place quite like that right in the vicinity of Sanctuary. Okay. Do we know when the next one is? Um, Freedom, uh, uh, speak, uh says, uh, well, uh, yes, I was looking into that. Uh, there is another one, um, I was unable to confirm to Definitively, whether or not Maribaldi is sponsoring this one, but there is another one happening in uh, South Ward, actually, um, in, I would say, uh, uh, let's see, today's the 20th, three days time. So even if it's not one that is sponsored by Maribaldi, it may benefit Go away. It may be beneficial to go there and see what you can find out. And if it is sponsored by Maribaldi, uh, all the better to find out what's going on. And maybe I'm just being paranoid, but no, I, know, I have a bad feeling. About it. Yeah, has have I seen or heard anything? Because I know that, like the EPA, sometimes partners with some of the more benevolent organizations mm -hmm. on some things, but we're not like, we're not trying to convert people to any type of religion. You should just be able to do, live your own life. But like, have I heard anything about the Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society? Make history check. <clears throat> Well, that's a natural one. Uh, the EPA maybe has worked with them before. You're not sure. And 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 as far as like knowing a lot about them, eh? Never, never really paid that much attention to them. So, yeah. Is is there any sort of pattern to the folks that are disappearing? You know, other than being down on their luck. Uh. I'm going to roll to see if Freedom knows the answer to this question. Ooh. <laughs> That's a great I know the answer to this question. I'm going to roll to see if Freedom knows the answer. It, it's difficult to determine. I've only had about 20 days to look into this. Keep in mind. Um. <laughs> uh. It's Spike. mostly hearsay and rumor. It's not, it's usually only one or two people at each place and trying to find people who knew them is, is difficult. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there is a pattern or not. I wouldn't be surprised if there is one, but I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I haven't had a chance to figure that out yet. Um, I'm going to roll for religion just because okay. I'm trying to put together because from what you've told me why they're what they're preaching about sounds like a 
cult or dark. Uh, yeah, make make a religion check for me to see what you know about the. Um, that was a seventeen again. Seventeen. So the Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society, which was formerly just called the Order of the Gauntlet, um, they generally worship good deities. Um, uh, or at the very least, at, at, at the worst, lawful neutral deities. So they are, um, you know, they, they really, they don't all worship one god, right? They're, each, they're devoted to different gods, sort of a collection of gods. Um, but the thing many of the gods that most of the members of the Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society have in common is they tend to be lawful slash lawful good, um, but em emphasis on the lawful part. Um, and, you know, they worship gods like Helm, the god of watchfulness, uh, uh, Torm, the god of courage and self-sacrifice, Tyr, the god of justice. So the Order of the Gauntlet, I mean, they're zealous. They, they're a little overzealous, but they don't have a reputation for being evil, right? They, they, I mean, again, they're a little overzealous. They're a little paternalistic. You know, they would be the sort of people who would, who would have the thought of like, well, you know, maybe if the, if the poor people worked harder, maybe if they were just a little bit more faithful to the gods, maybe they wouldn't be in the position that they're in. But that said, we should try to help them. And if we can show them to the correct path, maybe it will make them, maybe it'll put them in a better position. You know, that's sort of their religious uh, background, their religious take. Um, but they're not, I mean, as far as you know, there's no great evil insidious cult nested within them. They're just overzealous. I say we go to their next gathering and talk to people. Uh, well, <clears throat> at least I would not have to wear a disguise this time. I might know someone who maybe might have heard something. Kind of doubt it. But I could check in with him. Um, what was the other tidbit? So the mortgages. Yes, the mortgages. Let's talk about that. Now, technically, based on the information I've been able to find, um, thanks to a tip uh, Paula gave me, Penny, Paula is a character that Zuzu plays in another game, <laughs> and they both have P names, and it's very confusing to me <laughs> sometimes. Based on a tip that Penny gave me, um, it seems like while it's cruel, they are not in breach of contract to demand this immediate payment and foreclose upon properties. But given the fact that they are foreclosing neighborhoods and then those neighborhoods are immediately being sold to the watchful order, um, it's fishy. Uh, it's happened in Dock Ward and is now happening in the Trades Ward. Um, the block on the Dock Ward, from what I've been able to find, has seen a, a flurry of construction and, and activity inside the homes, which appears to be nearing completion. The whole area has been cordoned off recently. No one's allowed down those streets. Um, and the watchful order has announced uh, 
that they have an announcement to make in a 10 day. So, and the address given to the press about it, um, I, well, the address that will be given to the press about it, I have connections that got me that release a little in advance. Um, the address given to the press about this announcement is out just outside that area. So perhaps we'll find out why the watchful order is buying up this property. But as of right now, it's unclear. Now, so far, the only two places the National Bank of Waterdeep has done this are in the Dock Ward and the Trades Board. But I would not be surprised if they continue to do it in other boards. It seems, you know, one neighborhood may be a fluke. Maybe a, just a, a, a singular decision was made. Two neighborhoods, well, if you did one and then you did two, why would you stop at two? The dock ward is the one that is sold? The dock ward has finished the process of being sold. The neighborhood in the trades ward, the foreclosures be, uh, uh, have begun. Um, and that area, with the exception of a, a handful of residences, and Freedom does balk eyes with you, Penny. With the exception of a handful of residences, the neighborhood is empty. Did um, anyone manage to save their house in the dock ward? Not in the dock ward, no. But How many wards are in the city, approximately? Knowing this question puts the DM on the spot. <laughs> yeah, just give me one second, I'll tell you the exact <laughs> number. Well, if you count the City of the Dead, which doesn't really count, it's a graveyard, but it's long been counted among the wards of the city since, you know, wow. hundreds and hundreds of years ago. There are 14. 14. 13, 13 not counting the City of the Dead. Are the Dark Ward and the Trades Ward next to each other? They are nearby each other, yes. Uh, the The... Tra the dock ward is obviously all along the docks, and then you go inland and uphill a little bit, and you get to the trades ward, which sort of straddles the line of whether of on the plateau, off the plateau. The neighborhood they bought up in the trades ward, the trades ward is, you know, it, it's, it sort of sits between the richer parts of the city and the poorer parts of the city on the south side. The, the trades ward um, is mostly a middle class ward, but the neighborhood that was brought up was sort of lower end of mi middle class. Was there anything linking <laughs> or like anything similar between the neighborhood in the trades ward and the neighborhood in the dock ward? Yes, there was, actually. Um, the buildings in both areas were built the same year. Uh, that's, I mean, it's interesting, but I don't know what significance that has. What, what year was it? The buildings in both of those wards were built, uh, the ones that were foreclosed on, were built... Uh, a hundred years ago this year. Older buildings. Not by far, not the oldest in the city, but relatively old buildings for residential living. Were they all built by the same company or person? Uh, no, they were not all built by the same company or person. The ones in the dock ward were sort of just a mismatch of construction that all took place in um, 1899 DR. 
the mm -hmm. trade sword buildings were all designed by the same architect as sort of this, you know, a neighborhood that all the houses are going to look similar. But that's not that as far as I could tell, looking into the records and talking to my contacts, um, not the same. That person was not involved at all in the document. So with all that being said, and with my concern that this is a pattern and that we will likely see more of these mass foreclosures, I am concerned about the bank hanging on to these mortgage documents, if I'm being completely honest. Like, what do you mean by that? Let me put it this way. If the bank doesn't have the mortgage documents, how do they foreclose legally? Gotcha. Okay. Yep. But I understand that may be outside your comfort level as a group, which I am not, I am not asking you to do that because I do not think that will bring down Marivaldi in and of itself. But if you are so inclined, you would be doing a lot of people a lot of good. Okay. Well, I got nothing else going on. Um, I have a couple other questions. Um, with the houses, who was the open lord when they were built? Slash, like, 1899 was the open lord. Man, happy birthday. We're throwing you all kinds of questions today. Yeah, I have to, Do you know I that history? To, well, first, I'm going to roll a history check to see if she knows. If she there we go. There we go. I don't go. have to dig through my notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't remember. <laughs> um, I'm so proud of you. Okay. I suppose that could be fairly easy to go to a library and figure out. Yeah. Um, and then, are there other neighborhoods in the other wards? that were built around the same time. I mean, there were several in most wards that were built around the same time. Okay. There was a lot of, you know, there's always a lot of construction happening in Waterdeep. Sure. And Waterdeep was seeing a great deal of expansion around that time. I mean, that was when industrialization first really started kicking off. So there was a period of time where you saw the Undercliff War to go from being farmland to being a fully developed part of the city. Sure. You, I mean, the cre several wards were created, you know, between the end of the 1800s DR and uh, around 1920 DR. So, you know, there was a lot of activity during that time, and a lot of wards were, you know, became part of the city, were new parts of the city. Okay. That said, there are some wards with very, very little construction happening around that time frame. Those wards being the wealthier parts of the city. Sure. No present standing construction built around that time, I should specify. Most of the construction in in Sea Ward, North Ward, Castle Ward, um, and even Terrace Ward either happened before that time frame or after. There was obviously some construction that happened during that time frame in those wards, but there's not, you know, a huge number of buildings still that are around from that area like there are in many of the other wards and terrace ward is 
is one of the newer wards of the city, but, you know, it was built as a richer ward for the arc, those inclined in the arcane arcs. You know, Freedom, you sure do know lots of stuff about this city. You would do very thorough research. I make it my business to know what's going on in this city since I am trying to save it. <laughs> you so, of, you ever think about running for a political fig figure spot? I think I could do more good outside of politics than I can inside of politics, to be completely honest. Can I insight check her? Take an insight check. 10. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she seems to be forthright. Good. Hmm. All right, so. The things that you would like us to do are check out the order of the gauntlet, food banks and such, and if we're up to it, there's some documents you want out of the banker's hands that would make things easier. Yes. Like all of their mortgage documents? I mean, I guess it depends on how revolutionary you're feeling. Yeah. Certainly the ones for houses built that year, because I don't know enough about what neighborhoods they'll strike next. Maybe the, when the watchful order has their announcement in a 10 day, there'll be an announcement about new construction happening in a different ward. And that'll tip us off on where to focus on next. Or the press could ask if they're planning any other construction. I wonder if there's anything we could learn in some of these wards that are closed off. Yeah. Poke well, around. I hang around the dock ward all the time. I suppose just look around. Well, we just have to be careful if we investigate the dock ward because last time I was there and last time Octavia was there, we found that weird, weird. And then Penny, Penny's going to remember <laughs> that. The woman they saw may be Octavia's mom. And then she's gonna be like, the mind flayers. We saw the mind flayers situation. Right? Wasn't that happening in the dog ward? I don't oh. remember. Never mind. Don't listen to you me. You saw <laughs> uh, to that point. We did all see the same thing when you all brought the body of the watchful order agent back to. Vinny and myself. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and yes, there was the Mind Flayer tadpole within that agent. Now, I can't pretend I am remarkably knowledgeable on Mind Flayers. My spheres of expertise tend to be a little more... Mm, mundane than mind flayers but if there is some sort of mind flayer thing going on with the watchful order i would say that is troubling and i would want to avoid poking the watchful order too directly better to remove the bank from the equation to cut off the watchful order's supply of new locations than to attack the watchful order right now because we don't know enough about what's going on with them. Sure. So if the bank doesn't have its foreclosure documents, it can't collect, it can't get the locations, it can't get the money. And then and this presumably... Potential mind flayer situation has less chances to infest. Essentially. From what, at my best guess, I mean, I don't... 
Re rewinding there. So you're saying that hypothetically, if someone had stolen their mortgage documents, then they couldn't have foreclosed their house and they wouldn't have had to like get a bunch of money really quickly to pay off their mortgage. You'd have to have stolen the original documents from the bank in order to do that. But yes, hypothetically, because the bank would then have no legal ground to say that they owned the property. If they don't have documents to prove it, then how do they enforce it? Uh, it's a really good point. I kind of just wish someone had said that to me earlier and for no reason, but I just kind of wish that didn't. Ah, uh, okay. Is Penny being particularly strange today? <laughs> <laughs> if Artemis thinks that Art if you think Artemis would make an insight check on that, you may absolutely do so. Uh, Artemis doesn't, doesn't care what Penny's doing. Here's the is. thing. He doesn't know Penny that well because she keeps putting up barriers to him. I don't think so. He's just going to continue being like, wow, what an enigma. <laughs> Penny lives a very complicated life. Wow. She knows so much. I'm a journalist. Ah, oh, wow. Neat. So. <clears throat> I could be on board with that. If it's stopping mind players from taking over a city. All right. So. I don't know about anyone else, but we stole things once. We're pretty good at it. Oh, I have no problem doing any of this. Do we want to start with the food banks? Because it's sooner? I think probably. so. Yeah, sure. it would probably take less preparation. Like, we could probably investigate and do our research stuff for the mortgages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, pick up some explosives. Ooh. Oh. <clears throat> yes. Well, I will. I will say that um, with breaking into the bank, just if you are going to do that, make sure that you do your do research. It seems like you did a pretty good job figuring out what was going on at Blood Keith Textiles, but. You know, I forgot it was a bank. It is a bank, which what? means it will be under. What I know, textiles used to be a bank too. I Do know, I but just but it bank. isn't anymore. That well, just feels more so money. different. Do they use the Zentarum too, or are they a private security, a different security firm? Uh, oh God. Penny, when you were there, you noticed it was private security. It was not oh, damn. Zentarum. Right. We need, Brian. Brian. we need a Brian. We need a Brian. We're just going to come up with a formula for doing these things. Find a Brian and go. Yeah. We're going to find somebody who has a little bit down their luck. Yeah. We're going to fix them and then we're going to go in. Uh, Freedom, just hypothetically, if it were to come out that six ragtag, you know, motherfuckers had broken into a bank and got caught. Mm. Is that a particularly popular bank? I mean, how bad would the repercussions be? Well, the National Bank of Waterdeep is the largest bank in the city. Right. <laughs> All right. That one answers of the, the question. Banks in the nation. I <laughs> would recommend, if you are going to do that, not doing it in broad daylight. And also sure. wearing disguises. And also having an emergency escape plan. That's what the Hello. explosives are for. Oh, man, but I again, don't know I'm, you. Who are you? I, 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 want, no I want to be clear that I strongly believe that removing those mortgage documents from the bank, from the bank will be a net good. But I also do not believe that they will be sufficient to bring down Marvel. Right, so the research. Research first, but the yeah. the food. The yeah. food place is first. Yeah. Good call, good call. Whew. Okay. Um, I can check in with my person. I don't expect much. Artemis, who do you know that has extensive experience with homeless people? Well, I don't... Beyond I this don't, group. I don't know his um, experience with homeless who of us are homeless? Particular? I just Artemis know just homeless looks at people. Bowman. 
I know homeless people. Oh. I don't know. It might lead to nothing. Okay. He'll check in. I mean, we all know a... Wait, hold on. Bowman, where do you live? It's in the dark ward. in the dark ward. Right, right, but where? The dark ward. Where... If you had to be specific, <laughs> give it a street, cross streets. Cross the trade ward to the dark ward. <laughs> oh, oh, right, damn oh. you. By the la la the by the the dock area? Around, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think you, I know where you are. Once you hit the land too far. Okay. Like on a boat? <coughs> I mean that's pretty cool. Yeah. Do you have a houseboat? <clears throat> Freedom. Oh, how, yeah. how soon do you want this? Can I insight check Bowman? Yes, you may insight check Bowman. <laughs> I'm gonna roll, Bowman Bowman roll a deception check. <gasps> yeah. Dirty twenty. Uh, I want to see what my deception is because he might have got me. <laughs> uh, fifteen. <laughs> Um, yeah, Bowman is dodging this question about where he lives, mm -hmm. something fierce. And after Nix asked the question about if he has a boat, Bowman immediately changed boat. the top. A houseboat. Bowman immediately changed the topic. I will assume that's a yes. I know what I'm doing every single evening this week. Oh, you're gonna get a visitor. <laughs> okay. That's right. So, <clears throat> with with all that freedom says, well, do you have any more any more questions for me? I don't have a question, but I just wanted to um, give you a heads up. Mm. Um, at the at the party a couple weeks ago, we ran into Vinny, yeah. and he was asking. He danced with Octavia, right? Or Penny? <laughs> no, Octavia. Octavia. He was dancing with Octavia and asking a lot of questions about um, the Bodina Blood Keith. And I'm getting the vibe that he doesn't trust us very much. I don't know why he cares so much, but... Who was he there with? Let me go back to my notes. Really pretty woman. I wrote down... And... Was there Wilmington was, Wilmington. was there? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, and him. Um... Wait, is he the leader of the People's Vote Coalition? Because that's what he was introduced as. Wilmington, no. No. No, Dark Vinny, Dan as like Dark Vincent Dan. or some fancy name. No, was it? it was the guy he was with. Yeah. Oh, that's very important. I Good. Think his name was Dark and Bright Shield, unless I messed it up in my notes. Lance? Dag Dagren is that would that would probably not be correct. <laughs> Marchester? Oh no, that's your brother. Marchester. I wrote it down. That's me, bro. Marchester. <laughs> I'm gonna write that in my notes. <laughs> um, uh, Nick's found it. It's Marchester. Yeah, Marchester. Lance Marchester. I remembered Lance. And he called himself, like, Vinny called himself Vinofrio Aloro. Well. Is that his real name? Um. I... And he had an elven woman with it named Hecate. She was hot. Well. <laughs> In my notes, I have hot girl written down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've known that Vinny wasn't his real name for a long time, but I never knew what his real name was. Did he introduce himself as his real name to us? No. He was introduced to us, I think, by 
Yes. I mean, to be fair, we've all used our real names with each other, and we used our real names at the ball. Have we? So. Oh my god, insight check. Oh, <laughs> Please. Right here. Sure, go for it. Is Nick Nick's lying to me? <gasps> Dirty 20 again! Nick's. Nick's is her real name. All right. <laughs> she's, she's messing with you. Um, well, Lance Marchester, he is the he is the head congressperson of the People's Vote Coalition. Well, it sounds like I figured out who Vinny's associate is, which is not good, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Just be I, careful. So I will, thank you for the warning. So us working to get rid of Blood Keith and the people on our hit list, that is in support of the People's Vote Coalition, right? Yeah, wait, why are they, why, why is it bad? And also, Venny, that we know is bad news, is also... Well, he's poor. He can't do magic. What, what have I missed here? I've missed so, something. Here's the thing. It's not black and white. Not everybody in the People's Vote Coalition is a good person. Unfortunately. I just want to be clear about that. Just because they support voting rights, even if only nominally. That doesn't mean they're automatically a good person. It, <clears throat> someone like Lance Marchester, right? His family has been one of the richest families in Waterdeep for hundreds and hundreds of years. He is landed nobility. A lot of the landed nobility is on the side of the People's Vote Coalition because they have been replaced by the capitalist elite. So they support the People's Vote Coalition as a way to regain power. It's self-serving. It's not, uh, it's, it's not out of the goodness of their hearts. For some in the People's Vote Coalition, it is out of the goodness of their hearts, but not for not all of them. So, <clears throat> someone like Lance Margister, if it sounds like he's working with Vinny or Benothriel, I would suspect he's not, he's one of the people not doing it out of the goodness of his heart. Yeah, in the EPA, we, we, we like, are, are like, you're, we'll be okay with you since we're working towards the similar goals, but I don't really like how you're getting there or why you're doing it. I get confused when you say EPA every damn time. <laughs> <laughs> I go, oh, environment, nope, nope. Nope. Equal participation. I'm a association. association. <laughs> I'm Can I remember my own group's name? My family has probably been hit up by both parties frequently throughout my life. And yeah, I mean, your parents are pretty famous. So, yeah. yeah. Um, um, particularly yeah. the... Um, particularly, I would say... If you want to know more information about that, actually, roll a history check for me to see if you if, if you don't want to know more information, I don't have to bore you with it. It's up to I, you. I have plus zero for history. I got a nine. Your family's been hit up by both parties. Yeah. Um, your parents very rarely give any sort of, um, you know... They, they, they rarely, oh my god, I'm totally blanking on the word. Endorsement. Mm -hmm. Your parents very rarely give any sort of endorsement to anyone because they're hardly ever in Waterdeep. Yep. So their, their political stance has long been that if they don't know, then what gives them the right to make big claims? But based on what you know about your parents, you think you would think they would be more in line with the with the People's Vote Coalition. Yeah, so who, 
I'm sure. want people to be able to vote yeah. as opposed yeah. to the purity coalition that's like hey the number of people who can vote now that's the number it should stay at yeah yeah that's the name purity coalition purity of the vote Ugh. Mm-hmm. well at least they put it right out there for you mm-hmm. they know their crowd unfortunately right. so the people order the gauntlet vote are the ones who vote for them um well, we've got three days before one of us could go missing um that won't happen I want it to happen. I think that'd be cool. You want to get? You want to get? I caught? volunteer. Uh, Nick, All in do, favor? Do you, do you need to talk about something? No. <laughs> I want to find out what's happening. It's a good and idea. Right. Maybe if you can draw some to attention to yourself. Yeah. If we can figure out. I know out... how to be poor. I can be like that. I, I can go all in on this. <laughs> All right, we can be nearby, and we can just kind of see what happens. Maybe we can figure out some sort of pattern. We can check into yeah. that. But if not, we just kind of keep our eyes to the skies and or the ground. Yeah. Yeah, in the meantime, I can check the archives to see if I can find information on the missing people. Maybe hit up the police department, see if they yeah. have any records. Yeah. My theory... This is totally not based on anything. This is just... I love it already. A theory. My theory is that the people that have gone missing show a natural ability for magic. Because magic people go missing. A lot of the time, if they don't have a magic license. So if there's like a magical... Like a... Spectacle. Uh, yeah. And I've got, like, I, I do a little, like, thing with my hands. I make my mage hand appear. Or I cast minor illusion mm. on myself. And I'm just like, I can slip up. Um, I have a theory, if you want to hear yeah. it. The man that we took down, the, the watchful order, had, didn't really seem like himself at any point. I theorize that they're taking these homeless people, these poor people, brainwashing them, and then turning them to watchful order members. That is also a good... Maybe it's the magically inclined people that they're taking and turning into watchful... Combining our theories. That man did use magic against us. Oh, he did. Also, they have a warehouse, or they used to have a warehouse, in the Undercliff Ward. Did I tell oh. you about that? Did Octavia and I tell you guys about that? That we go, we went and visited that man. What I man? I think so. Oh well, we went and we visited this guy. I can't believe I didn't tell you guys this. So we we went to visit this guy named Donald McCready, who was like a contact from Freedom Octavia. Freedom sits forward. Donald <laughs> McCready's alive. Uh, yeah. Nope. No. Yeah. He I didn't. didn't. I, but don't tell him I told you that because I'm all, he already like hates me, this guy. You, no, you don't understand. There was a Harper's cell in Waterdeep 25, 30 years ago that disappeared. Yeah, they all died. I got sent yeah. here from another city to start it back up 10 years ago a little over 10 years ago 12 years ago ish oh well i'm sorry if you knew any of them because they're all dead apparently except for donald mccready but i wouldn't huh. go and ask him about it because he gets real it's like a whole thing he like fell into a depression when he was talking to us and we had to get out of there really fast is he okay? They have a warehouse. The Watchful Order has a warehouse in the Undercliff Ward by the train yard, and things get brought in there. But if you go to look in to see what they're bringing in, that's when the whole group died. So, oh, well, we're doing that, right? Yeah. Sounds like fun. 
Okay, that seems well, like a thing that can, we should do now. Can we start with the food bank and work our way up to the death warehouse? That's probably a good idea. Would Gennaro have heard of the Harpers? You're part of them. You're part of them now. Oh, not yeah. the Harpers. The, sorry. You're part of them I now. Care. <laughs> It's your criminal organization. Does Denara have heard the name from her parents or anything? Uh, as in the, the, which name? Sorry. The guy that, Washington the guy Order. she went to visit. Oh. oh, no. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, no, no role required. Your parents, you've never heard that name from your parents. Perfect. All right. Food bank. We fill up. If Nyx gets snatched, we save her. And then we go maybe die. What? This sounds frankly exhilarating. We're not going to the warehouse yet. Is that what you're talking about? Or you well, mean I mean eventually, yeah. I just think that sounds, you know, exciting. Is Octavia well, you can go by yourself because I'm not going there. Uh, Octavia is here. She is being very quiet. She has been quiet since Penny almost slipped up with a piece of information. Uh, with her maybe mom. With her maybe mom. I didn't say anything. Look, okay? <clears throat> but I will say just generally, I think Octavia has been quiet most of this time because she is still grappling with Things related to her mom. Fair. That All right. she Great. Hasn't so maybe we don't push that. Divulge, divulge. Yet. Well, um, Freedom, is there any more intel that you need to tell us before we take this task? I've told you what I've been able to dig up. I'm happy to keep looking into things if that would be helpful, but you all have already proven yourselves, so I trust you to be able to move forward. But Please don't hesitate to reach out if you do need anything from me. And in terms of getting information from the police department about um, missing people, um, I was able to get that information from uh, Lieutenant Talon, um, our friend inside the department. But if you would like um, to connect with him directly, you can. I can set that up. Sure. Okay. I'd love to take notes on that. Great. Um, if you want, I can arrange for him to meet you at, let's say, the Inkwell. Safety for round. Tomorrow evening. Works for me. Is it called the Inkwell because they serve well drinks to journalists? who write a lot using ink. Is it because the Waterdeep Times is across the way? That's what I always thought. Because it's not just journalists that go there. Yeah, but like, they serve a lot of journalists. Mm. Well drinks. And so ink well. What is a I well I appreciate drink? that. It's like, like a rum It's and not coke. Bright Shield Vintage. Yeah. It's like cheap stuff. <clears throat> Um, Speaking of which, uh, I would, assume Freedom, so. would you like to buy a case of Bright Shield Vintage? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not liquid enough to buy a full case of Bright Shield Vintage. All right, well, let me know if that's true. <clears throat> not liquid enough. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's it, I will be heading out for the evening. Um, good luck. Thank you. And, you know, Keep me updated as you're able to. Uh, and she leaves. Uh, what time of evening is it? Uh, you know, I mean, this is, uh, this is day 20, so you and Nick's had off, so you, you all could have met a little earlier than normal, but I would say it's after dark at the very least. Unless anybody has anything else. Um... Artemis, at the end of everything, 
was starting to drift in his attention, pulled out his little mandolin, was picking absentmindedly. Um, oh. And then he looks around at the group and he says, oh, do we want a bit of entertainment? Can, can, I, roll uh, an arca- can I roll an Arcana check on, uh, on uh, Artemis' uh, mandolin? Sure. I got a 15. I'm still to make sure. Is, okay. This is the one you enchanted, right? It is. Uh, yeah, you can tell there's a little bit of a magical aura about it. Oh, Artemis. Hm. Yes, Bowman. How did you get that enchantment on there? Oh, I did it. Do you like you, it? You did it. I did. It took me too much time, frankly. Would have much rather tried to, for instance, find out where exactly you live, but alas, it took all of my time. You got a 17 so. insight. <laughs> I am not lying. He's, I won't even roll. not lying. That's the truth. <laughs> you made it. Fine. <laughs> took some digging. Um, but anyway, if you're impressed, I could I could show off a bit of what I can do now. Uh, uh I gotta. I best be going. Yeah, I have work tomorrow. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. It'll be fun. Bowman, Bowman. Here, look at me. I suggest, bring, that you perform, to the best of your ability, a song, dance, and poetry for us. Ooh! <laughs> Roll of constitution on that. That's wisdom save. Wisdom. Fine. Uh, where is... <laughs> Happy birthday, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> that was a non-natural 20. Fuck! <laughs> I linger on the cord. And nothing happens. Good night, Artemis. Why don't you do it? That's what you... You're normally the one that sings. No, the entire thing was him doing... He throws a bit of a fit. (laughs) Why did you want to see Bowman dancing? You don't want to see Bowman dance? I can honestly say the thought has never crossed my mind. Bowman is out of the room at this point. I have the thought maybe... Three times a day. Uh, okay, well, that's It a would lot. just be so fun. <laughs> we can unpack that at a later date, but I... I think of him dance, singing. <sighs> one day. I'll do it one day. Uh, be warned. With that, you all, one by one, make your way out and back <laughs> home. So, uh, it sounds like there are basically two things y'all want to do before the... Uh, soup kitchen, basically. Um, so, uh, let's do... I'm going to roll for it. Let's do Penny's meeting with, um, Lieutenant Talon first. So, Penny, uh, after work on the 21st, you go in, um... You, you go to uh, the Inkwell um, and meet with Lieutenant Addison Talon for dinner. Um, he's in sort of a booth at the back corner of the room. Uh, there's not that many people sitting. There's nobody sitting nearby. <clears throat> uh, you go and sit across from him, um, and he's got, a, he's got a drink in front of him, and he says, uh, Hello there. <clears throat> nice to see you. Um, I believe uh, a mutual friend of ours uh, said you were looking for some names. And he hands yeah. you a, uh, he, he hands you a, a very small file and says, uh, this is what we have. Um, unfortunately, because of the nature of who those names belong to, uh, nobody's really looking for them. Got it. Okay. Can I keep this, or do you need this back? That's a copy. Oh, I, okay. I wrote down. Oh, well, the... you could you could have just dropped this in my mailbox, I guess. I would rather not risk somebody who's not supposed to get it get their hands on it. Yeah, I guess that's true. But can I, can I open it here, or do I have to like open it in the back corner? 
or like in a different room. Uh, he, he glances around, he says, I think you're good to open it here. Okay. So I'm going to open it and look through it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, you find a list of, of names, um, about, uh, about 12 names on this list. Um, and just, you know, quick glancing through them, um, it's hard to get any sort of, uh, a very, very, like, good idea of who these people were. Um, they seem to come based on the name, based on the names, they seem to come from different ancestries and backgrounds, um, so on and so forth. Uh, just to give you, uh, you know, a couple, uh, we don't have the, the whole list of 12, you know, don't necessarily need to go into it, but I can send you the whole list of 12 separately later if you want it. Um, mm -hmm. But um, just as a couple of those names, you know, uh, there's a, a Kriga is listed there. Um, there's a... Uh, 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 a Ilanis uh, listed, um, a, uh, a, a Conrad, um, a, a Henry. Um, very few of the people here have last names. Um, most of them are first name only, but uh, they are usually paired <coughs> as not many of them, but a few of them have a short description next to them just based off of what little investigation the police were able to gather. Um, go ahead and make an intelligence check for me to see if you can notice a pattern between the descriptions that you are seeing. 16. 16. Looking through the descriptions, by no means does every name have a complete and thorough description. But based on what you're able to find, looking at these names and descriptions, it sounds it seems like all the ones that do have descriptions were taller on the taller side and on the bulkier side. A boom, and they're coming for you. <laughs> I was gonna say, Nyx does not fit that. <laughs> okay, so maybe we swap out Nyx for boom. <laughs> ah. Is there, or we get Nyx to hit the gym real fast? I could cast this guy's self, yeah, and get taller. You can't change your body, your body. Type. I can adjust, I think. With this guy's self, I can make myself foot. a foot taller or a foot shorter. Someone use enlarge on her. Well, Good, so, so you'll be five feet. So I, I will say there are Four. some there are some names on here that you know, there's some dwarf names, there's some, you know, halfling names, some some known names. There are shorter races here. But for uh for those of an ancestry that typically has smaller um, individuals. Um, it is typically based on the ones that have descriptions, uh, individuals who seem relatively healthy and strong. And tall is a common characteristic you see across all of these. Bulky is sort of a common characteristic you see across all of these which speaks to you, it in turn, it's basically relative to ancestry, right? So like, yeah, of course, you know, no gnome is gonna be a giant, right? But certainly some gnomes are taller and stronger than other gnomes, you know? Is there a location of the different like where all these took place, like what wards these were in? Were these all from similar wards or different ones? They all were recorded as being from poorer wards in the city. Um, but 
uh, uh, no specific pattern beyond their poor. Okay. They're homeless huh. specifically. Which is... What do, do we know anything about ages? Um, very few ages recorded. Those that are recorded are there's there's no specific pattern. There's not that many. Again, of the ones with rough ages recorded, um, there's no specific age range. Though it does trend towards the younger end, which fits with what you're seeing in terms of the general physical um, stature of the people they are trying that that are going missing. And then are there dates? Like, how frequently is this happening? Um, there's report dates from, you know, dating back a year ago, thereabouts. Um, and Lieutenant Talon does say <clears throat> it's possible that there were more before this. These are the only ones that are technically still open and active investigations but nobody's actually investigating them because they're homeless. It's more of a uh, formality. Um, but these will likely be, these cases will likely be closed soon. Particularly the older ones. What was the most recent disappearance? That was, <clears throat> he points to a name at the bottom of the list. Um, the name is uh, Simon Mayweather. Um, one of the few last names on the list. Uh, and Simon Mayweather was uh, in his 30s, a human man. Um, looked, it, it based, based on, he, they, you know, he, again, not a ton of information, but he was on the taller end um, described by people who knew him as fairly muscular. Um, and that's about where the description ends. Okay. And when was that? How recent? Uh, that was, <clears throat> excuse me, that was at the very tail end of last year, uh, last week of last year, last 10 day of last year. It was the twenty. Um, eighth of, um, uh, let me look at the calendar. It was the 28th of the drawing down. Hmm. Okay. That um, was a while ago. Uh, it was a little over a month ago. Well, no, it was almost two months ago now. They're going to be ready to grab someone. <laughs> he says, they're itching to grab someone. Okay. And what ward was this in? That one was in Doc Ward. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. And do you know how, do you have any idea when the next food bank event is where it's going to take place? Uh, Freedom already gave you that information. Oh, South she ward. where? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Is there anything else you think I should know? Um, unfortunately, I don't have much else to give you related to this um, specifically. Yeah. The police force is doing a really good job on this. Yeah, I know. Mm. The cool. sentiment is shared. But you work you work for them yes and you have that information because i do all right fair enough fair enough all right well thank you uh he gets up finishes his drink goes to the bar pays and leaves cut away from there <clears throat> Uh, Artemis, you were gonna go see somebody. Yeah, if there's, a, if there's any different information, because that was a lot, 
of mm-hmm. good information. Mm-hmm. If there's anything different, we can go for it. But if I learn the same thing and or if there's something else for me to discover. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we'll go through it. But yeah, you go visit uh, Andrew. Um, yeah. Andrew is someone that you know um, from... First couple of days. From your first couple of days in the city. Um, human man in his late 50s, sort of hunched over, uh, very, very worn. Um, you know his address, but you've never actually visited him at home before. Uh, but when you arrive, you find he's he's living in sort of a, a rundown um, shack. When you knock at the door, he he looks surprised to see you, but he welcomes you inside. Um, and as, as he does, you see there's, uh, there's a bunch of, like, very, um, like, children basically dressed in rags are gathered around a, a table in the center of the room with, like, bowls of um, some not great looking porridge, um, sort of scarfing it down quickly. Uh, as they finish, they say, Thank you, Mr. Andrew, and then they run out the door. Um, uh, Andrew sort of um, runs his hand through his sort of uh, very thin gray hair and says, um, So, um, Mr. Brightshield, this is a surprise. I... Didn't yeah, sorry to jump in. I would ever see you again. Well, I knew I would check in now and then. How have things been going, generally speaking, <clears throat> comparatively? Um, you know, uh, as well as they can, I, I, I sure. do what I can for the children who live on the streets. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know if you can be of much help, but I've been hearing some stories lately about people going missing that are a little more down on their luck. Uh, Not children, but if I've talked to Penny, I would like to relay that they are taller, more fit. Sure, we could say this is, you know, the day after Penny meets with um, Lieutenant Talon, so you're able to use that information to help you along. Unless Penny would withhold any of that. So. That's great. Um, I didn't know if you... I'd heard of anything, or knew of anything. Um, I will be uh, honest with you, uh, Mr. Brightfield. Um, there's, I warned the children not to go to those places because those disappearances have been happening um, for quite a while. For a very long time, actually. Several years. Really? Uh, it happens infrequently enough to few enough people that, um, you know, a lot of people think it's just a coincidence, but I've reported it to the police many times, fallen on deaf ears, because, I mean, he gestures to the run-down shack around him. Of course. They don't exactly take me very seriously. But a lot of the extremely poor of the city know that, know about this. And a lot of people think it's just a superstition, but I would rather I make sure that the children, I would rather make sure the children that I help look after are, don't go missing. Right. As best as I can. Right. We're thinking of, well, I'm thinking of maybe <clears throat> checking it out myself, I suppose. Um, anyway. Make, if anything... make, a, make an insight check for me, too, please. Ooh. Or a perception. Mm, no, insight. Definitely. All right. Um, uh, 22. As you are, as you are having this conversation with Andrew, you notice one of the children at the table um, seems to have 
stopped eating and uh, is shaking very slightly. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm gonna like settle down into a chair mm-hmm. and like pull out the mandolin and just start like playing a fun little tune and just having casual conversation with Andrew. Okay. Lightening um, up the mood. And yeah. if any kids that are still around yeah. catch their eye, give them little winks, do little minor illusions, just entertain yeah. Yeah. for a while. Yeah, you definitely seem to raise the spirits of some of these kids. Um, the kid that you clocked who got, who seemed, as you were having that conversation, to had a sort of a visible reaction to that conversation. He lightens up a little bit, but he seems a little, still a little removed from the rest of the children. The rest of the children, you know, some of them enjoy it, some of them finish their food and leave. You know, they they all have had a tough life, but some of them genuinely enjoy like this little moment of levity and entertainment. But um yeah, that the the one child you noticed before doesn't leave right away. He stays and he listens to the music and he seems to you know enjoy it a little bit, but he seems just, you know, there was a visible change in his mood. Yeah. Um after as a reaction to that conversation but eventually yeah, they all trickle bit, out i want to try and maybe even catch this kid okay yeah beforehand a minor illusion i'll keep the music playing uh-huh entertaining folks okay. um and if i can sit down next to him yeah as as he as he gets up to leave and uh there's a few other children who yeah you you use minor illusion illusion to keep some music playing um, <clears throat> and Andre is like, you know, sometimes, sometimes Andre will like read some stories to the children, like after dinner, um, for any who want to stick around for that. So a few of them are settling in for that now. Um, you go over to the, uh, uh to that one child who's like getting up to, who's about to get up to leave. Hi. Um, Hi. Artemis. <clears throat> hi, hi, Artemis. Um, uh, I, I'm Adam. Adam? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Well, I would like an honest critique, if you don't mind. Good? Bad? Do I need to get better? If I stink, you can just tell me. Uh, <laughs> and you're, you're good. You're good. No, honest. Be real. No, you. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make the minor illusion make like a big fart noise. A bunch of the do kids I stink? Laugh. Uh, and Adam, Adam smiles a little bit. Okay, you stink a little bit. Yeah, my brother says the same. Do you have any brothers? No. Ah, you're better off without them. Let me tell you. Do you mind if I ask you a question, though? No. I'm trying to help out a little more. In general, be just a better person. And I was wondering if there was anything you could tell me about those food banks I was talking to Andrea about earlier. Anything you might know or have heard of or a warning to give me before I go in and Try to stop them. Uh, make a persuasion check. Twenty nine. Um, a little while ago, for the new year, there is this. Uh, there is this. There is this, this strong guy. You know, he, he would he would let me stay by his fire at night. Uh, he, he always made, like, little fires whenever he could. His name was Simon. Um, and he, he heard about one of the food things. And I told him that Mr. Andre always told us kids that it was... It was those were dangerous, um, but 
he said, uh, you know, how dangerous could it be? And he was real hungry, mister. He hadn't, he hadn't eaten anything in a 10 day. Um, so he went and, uh, I saw him again that night, uh, and he seemed, he seemed happy because he, he got some good food, um, and he was letting me sit with him at the fire, uh, and I, I must, uh, I must have fallen asleep at one point, but I woke up, and, uh, there was some, there were some scary monsters dragging Simon away. I have I haven't seen him since. Dude, I know it was dark, but did you get any good looks at those monsters? I I I I. I hid. I hid the, the look. They were big, big and scary. Sure. That was probably a smart move. Alright. That's helpful. I'll keep an eye out for monsters. And if I see any, I'll be sure to get rid of them. But you don't look near, nearly as strong as Simon. <laughs> How are you going to get rid of the monsters? Oh, like a true child just cuts right to the friggin' core. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not at first. But I have some friends. Like it seems you do, here. That makes me stronger. Okay. Yeah. Alright, well listen. I know this is kind of hollow, but I'm gonna like I'm gonna slip him five talents. Try not to tell everyone else, but <laughs> in case, save it for a rainy day. All right, it's very helpful. Okay. All right, you take care, and if you come up with your own songs, let me know. Because I need to learn some new ones. Yeah, that last one was real farty. <laughs> yeah. Alright. And I will <laughs> let him do his thing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. We move. Um, just check in with Andre. Thank him. Yeah. Again. Yeah, he thanks you for stopping by and entertaining the children. Of course. And remember, if you, if you do... Want to come by again sometime to play some music? The children seem to enjoy it. I will. Thank you. Um, same to you. If you ever need anything, give him a handshake. And I'm gonna slyly slip 150 talents into his hand. Woo! He looks at the like he uh uh his, like, as he looks down at his hand and sees the, sees the wad of cash that you left him, his eyes, like, tear up. Um, and he quickly, like, puts it away, and then he, like, just full-on gives you a hug. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll hug him back. And I will, in his ear, just say, I know you're gonna make sure they're okay, but don't forget to take care of yourself, too. He just nods and pats you on the back. Give everybody a wink, make a big fart noise, and leave. Great. Great. I will report back all the information. Excellent. <clears throat> so, armed with all that information, uh, what is the plan for going to this um, uh, soup kitchen, essentially? I really hate to throw this idea out because, Bowman, I know you're going to hate it, but maybe if you draw the attention, it seems like the snatchings happen afterwards. If we maybe laid a trap at your home and just kept watch. My <coughs> understanding is they tend to grab those who are homeless more 
easy targets. I could probably find a, uh, a quote unquote bum hole uh, to hang around. You can't drag someone else in as bait. That's unethical. Is there a chance that I could fight or kick some ass? Probably. Oh, I mean, I think we're all going to if, if monsters show up. Great. Fantastic. But do we want to find out where they take people? Or well, if we don't, no, of course we do. But we need. So if there's someone we can interrogate, I mean, monster could be a man in a mask, right? Sure. So if it's someone we can interrogate, let's find out. Otherwise, I don't know. We can beat the crap out of them and see where they run. Mm. Do I'm we in. all want to go to the food bank separately? Or do we want to have some people go and some people stay out and then kind of meet up somewhere? N- not to uh, not to offend anyone, but I think maybe the two ones that know it, how to act like lower poor people should probably go in. And- well, yes, but... I wonder if they take day of volunteers. Hmm. Huh. Where the rest of you could be volunteering, trying to help the poor. Pitching in. And if they say no, then we have a reason to be in the area. Right. I like that. Should we be disguised or should we go as ourselves? That depends on whether or not you want to be associated with this organization. Hmm. I'm going to go as my, mm, no, I'm going to disguise myself because Perhaps I don't. Perhaps we should all disguise ourselves. May, maybe that's for the best. Oh. All right, yeah, we can do that. If Janara, you might be able to help me out again. Okay. Maybe not with a beard. It got a little itchy last time, but. <laughs> so Bowman, Bowman strokes his beard. <laughs> so Bowman and Nix are going to pretend to be patrons of the food of the food bank, and then the rest of us are going to try to volunteer. Yeah. It works. Is this the day before we would do this? I would assume you all are meeting the day before, yeah. Okay. Hmm. For our own, like, resources and abilities, is Octavia going to be with us? Or is Octavia, like, I, I is she assume, feeling a little under the weather today? And is uh, mysteriously I would assume, not with us? I would assume Octavia is, is meeting up with all of you and cool. whatnot, so. Okay. Is that too many people volunteering? Yeah, because the homeless people really have a problem with too many people volunteering. I mean, does it look suspicious? You okay, could say I that don't... you guys are part of like a neighborhood community service organization or something. Well, I was thinking it might be interesting to have someone stationed outside to kind of see what's going on, if there's any people hanging around. That's, that's true. Mm, How would maybe... I do that? Or, or someone else who has Of course messaged. you don't want to help out inside the kitchen. No, believe me, I'm more than happy to hang out. It's just I can be invisible. I can keep an eye on things. Oh, okay. yeah. That, that's a good and point. I'm messages. good at a lot of things and an expert in almost nothing. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm your utility belt. Throw me anywhere. Mm-hmm. Works for me. Um, perhaps Nix and Penny should attempt to very slyly ask around about Simon. Yeah. Try not to draw too much attention to yourselves, though. Yeah. 
Am I going in as a yeah, participant or ask, a volunteer? Penny, do you want to be a poor person or a volunteer? Okay, so my only thing is that Penny has plus zero deception. As much as she loves the idea of like playing in the field, pretending to be a poor person, like player Zuzu feels like this <laughs> really bad for how candid Penny is about everything. No, nah, it'll be so good. Send her in. Send her in. Okay, but I feel like Penny's going to be like, you want me on the field? Do you want to be on the field? Um, Penny Presswell, ace investigative reporter, is incredible on the field. Yeah, right, I'll go right. on the field. You could get some good inside scoops for an upcoming story. Yeah, well, that's like, I was also going to say, would it be helpful to just have me go as me covering the food bank events? No, because I mean, then, then I wouldn't have to disguise airs. myself. They'll hmm? be like, oh, the press is here. That's true. We have to make ourselves look good. That's true. Right now, I want someone disappearing right after right. a reporter covered the That's true. Soup kitchen. Yeah. Yes, and strangely, we want someone to disappear, and we want it to be one of us. Yeah, it has to be one of us. <laughs> we should. So luckily, both of you two, actually, Penny as well, um, all of you can do some sort of little magic-y bit. Yeah. And I can keep an eye out for any, you know, watchful orders of people who are going to snitch and message folks if things are getting bad. Yeah. I'll come up with Flawless my plan tonight. Okay. So my understanding is... Bowman, a recap because that's we don't always know. a good sign. I, Bowman, Nix, and Penny are all going in undercover as homeless people. Um, and then Janara and Artemis, and we'll say Janara and Octavia, will say, are going to see if they can volunteer. And Artemis is hanging out invisible outside. Yeah. I'll be running around. Not always invisible because of message, but... Sure, sure. Artemis will be outside keeping an eye on things. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, you all go there. Uh, we'll go ahead and say, now, Janara, you are going to disguise yourself? I'm going to disguise myself and... I'm not going to volunteer at the same time as Octavia. Okay, so the two of you are going to show up at different times. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and say that uh, uh, with sufficient time, with your disguise kit, you are able to put on a good disguise, so nobody should be yeah. able to recognize you. Um, not that you're necessarily that worried about running into anybody who would know you by sight, but still. Oh, better safe than sorry um certainly um and then uh uh for bowman nix and penny um who are being the undercover uh homeless folks slash and one of you is actually homeless folks but you know um uh any particular changes to outfits are you disguising yourselves what what are the three of you doing uh bowman's just not gonna wear his trench coat okay but she wears it all the time so it's a big difference yeah yeah go ahead and mark that with your ac yeah you're Ooh. not wearing armor <laughs> um next is no, nothing should happen. Nothing should happen. Um, she's just gonna change her. She's gonna make herself look like a blonde halfling because that's her okay. go-to disguise. Okay, great. Penny. Um, last time Janara disguised me, so I feel like before I go, maybe I'll stop by Janara's house and ask me, or ask her if she can. Okay. Ask me. Yeah, yeah. Janara helps you like make it look like you're sort of a. Puts on my face. For yeah, me. Put, puts puts on your face, which is, you know, dirt and <laughs> and grime and 
and you know a couple scars and lines and that sort of thing mm-hmm. but yeah um excellent rendezvous with penny just outside when, okay. once she's going to show up okay um and just kind of kind of flag her down mm-hmm. to like follow me you know sneakily like down an alley or something out of sight uh-huh um so that i could be like hi just wanted to you know help out a little more and <clears throat> i'm gonna pull out the mandolin no, no, no. I don't want to oh, hear Penny, one of your Oh, Penny, there she song. is, a fighter with the magic side. All of her enemies, they walk around with dread, hoping their undershirts won't be stained red when they end up dead, very dead. And I will inspire Penny for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> there you Yay. go. You have a D8 bardic inspiration die you can use within the next 10 minutes. Thank you. I hate when you use your magic on me. This is like the one time you healed me the day I met you. Yeah, well, I mean, if you want me to, like, leave you to the dogs, then just let me know. (laughs) All right, I'll be around. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll be in there, playing the field. Have fun. Order. (laughs) Uh, with that, you all, you know, one by one are showing up in different capacities. So to give you an idea of what this place is like, um, they've rented out sort of a, you know, uh, I mean, it, it, it is like a, you know, it's like a hall, like a, like an activity hall, um, that has definitely seen better days. The building is sagging, um, exposed wood beams in the ceiling. You can see like edges of birds nests like peeking over and stuff so it you know it's not the best maintained building in the world but it's been swept and cleaned up as best as possible by the volunteers um lit with lanterns and 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 fires and that sort of thing uh octavia and janara um both of you are able to find volunteering spot because they are always looking for more volunteers um Prior to the their actual opening uh, of this place, they uh, put both of you to work. Janara, they put you to work um, sweeping up the main floor. Um, and you know your your uh, when you showed up, they asked for your name for your names. Um, I presume I assume you both gave fake names, but what fake name would Janara have given? Do you think? Um, even if, even if you just have a first name, you know, for the people to refer to you by when they talk to you. Flora. Okay. So, uh, as you're sweeping, um, you know, there, there's a, there's another man and a woman, uh, uh, sweeping, sweeping with you. Um, both look, you know, uh, uh, relatively well to do, um, sort of, Kind, kindly faces as they're sweeping and they're saying, don't think we've ever uh, seen you uh, uh, work one of these before, Flora. Um, are you interested in, in joining the uh, Order of the Gauntlet Reform Society? Or just want to do some good for some folks? I haven't totally decided, but I really, I didn't have anything to do today. And, you know, I just... I've been wanting to volunteer a little bit more and I heard this was happening, so I figured I'd come over. Well, we could always we could always use more help. Um, uh, yes, we, we appreciate it so very greatly. Um, at this point, as you're sort of sweeping up, um, side door opens uh, uh, and a very wealthy looking um, gentleman um, comes in. Uh, uh, he's got sort of um, greased back dark hair, um, and, uh, uh, he's got, like, uh, a couple of, of, uh, larger individuals with him carrying, like, crates and crates and crates. Um, and he comes into the room and he says, uh, ah, nice to see you again, Aljuis. Shakes his hand. Nice to see you, nice to see you. Uh, and Aljuis, the gentleman you were sweeping up with, says, uh, oh, uh, Rodolfo, <laughs> it's, it's good to see you. Um, does this mean that, uh, Mr. Maragaldi is, um, 
has has agreed to sponsor this this event. And Rodolfo nods and says, "Yes, indeed, Mr. Maribaldi was able to uh, secure a sizable donation of food stuff. So we will just uh, we'll come in and you know keep doing what you're doing. We'll just take this food back into the kitchen that they so they can serve it. Uh, you know, as always, I will uh, I'll make sure that Mr. Maribaldi's donation gets gets uh, well well um, is." well and deservedly spread amongst amongst these poor, poor folk. Uh, and he sort of moves on into, off into the kitchen with these two larger guys. Um, Did I notice if either of them have the weird Make a perception check on. for me. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So here's what I'll say. Uh, you did not notice. Um, you did not notice a. Uh, 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 you you didn't notice um, the gray eyes thing that 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 you would have been looking for, but sunglasses and doors. You did notice <laughs> that Rodolfo, um, there was a slight shimmer about his appearance as if he is disguising his true appearance with illusion magic. Right. Um... Meanwhile, outside, uh, uh, the three of you who are all pretending to be homeless have sort of joined the, the uh, queue of people. Um, there are a few workers for the event outside that are passing out pamphlets about um, the benefits of, of worship. Uh, and, you know, they, they hand out pamphlets about, like, different gods, like, here's what's good about Helm, here's what's good about Torn, here's what's good about Tear. Um, that sort of thing. It's like, come, come, all you poor, poor folk, lift yourselves out of your depravity. Come and worship at the feet of one of the great deities of civilization. They can guide you on the path, and they can help raise you out of the squalor you have found yourselves in. Come. And they're passing out. The food will begin shortly, but please, please take some time to read these pamphlets. Or if you cannot read, one of us would be happy to read it to you. It is so very important to educate yourselves on which gods will are really going to truly help you and which gods are going to lead you astray. As the guy, as people are passing out pamphlets, Nix is just going to be like, She's, she's basically going to start interrogating these poor people. Uh -huh. um, and it's like, so you mentioned that they, or they mentioned that you, if somebody couldn't read, you'd read it to them. Do you guys offer like reading lessons or classes or anything like that for people who come by these things? Or do you just <laughs> tell them what it says? Oh, we, uh, these are short events. We don't have, you know, we don't have time to teach, teach someone how to read, unfortunately. We do sometimes sponsor small educational opportunities for folks uh, on occasion. Oh, interesting. And, uh, what is your next, uh, educational opportunity? Oh, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't happen to know when it is. Un unfortunately, it, it's hard to get the uh, um, fun funding for, for those events. It's a lot easier to secure food than it is to secure, um, um, you know, funding for, for educational sure, sure. outreach. Sure. Um, I do. And do you, so it's mainly but just if you, if you come stuff? If you come to the, the Temple of Torm, um, I'm sure one of the priests there would be happy to teach you how to read. Oh, I know how to read. Oh. I was just wondering. 
Um, okay. Alright, well, you... Can't... Thank you for the information. Um, uh, uh, as we're... I assume it, look, it's pretty crowded, right? Yeah, it's start, there's a crowd starting to gather. The soup kitchen's gonna open soon. Awesome. Uh, Bowman's just gonna, as he's, like, walking past people, the ones mm-hmm. that particularly, like, are, like, hacking up a lung or, like, seem a little bit more sick or anything, mm-hmm. he's just gonna slight a hand, hand, uh, lay on hands to, uh, be discreet, but not be discreet. Mm, okay. You are walking a very fine line, sir. Um, There's lots of people around. Lots of people I, I, around. Go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. And depending on how well you do, that's how well you basically are trying to draw attention from the right people. Yes. Would performance be better for you? Hmm. Performance might actually work better for this, to be honest. Let's go with performance. If that's worse for you, Bowman, I'm so sorry. <laughs> actually, performance is way better for me. Because I have a plus zero for sleight of hand and four, plus four for performance. All right. So I got a 21. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You you go around. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's, let's say you, you use um, 15 points of lay on hands in the process, but you cure three poor homeless people of disease, which, you know, pretty tight. Um, as, as the, as you're doing it, the glow of your hand fades just as the doors, um, open up and you see a very, very wealthy looking, uh, rich gentleman with slicked back dark hair, um, sees you do that but he doesn't make any comment or anything he just says hello everyone on behalf of the order of the gauntlet reform society and diego marivaldi philanthropist uh welcome uh please come in and enjoy the food um and he steps aside and people sort of are are you know in a straight line led up to a counter where uh workers behind the counter is serving them food at this point uh Gennara, i would say that you are um since you were put on like cleaning duty you are sort of just in charge of like cleaning you know wiping down tables as you can picking up dishes that sort of thing um and octavia is is actually working in the kitchen like putting food on people's uh, in people's bowls and, and that sort of thing. Um, so people start uh, uh, shuffling in, going through one by one. Um, what does everybody want to do during this time? Uh, once I get, once Penny gets her food, she's going to try to look around for either family or a woman who is about her age. Um, yeah, you managed to find a, a you, you find a woman about, yeah, about your age, sort of sitting off to the side on her own. Um, she's got sort of a, a hunk of bread and is just, you know, greedily like slurping up, slurping up some soup and taking bites from her hunk of bread. Hmm. All right. I want to go and um, walk over to her and say, uh, do you mind if I sit here? Her mouth is full, so she doesn't say anything. She just gestures and Thanks. I know it's silly, but I just always feel better when I'm eating next to people than if I'm eating alone. Sorry, just a weird thing. Do you have a name? You, well, what is your name? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a name? Ace uh, Reporter! Uh, Ace she, Reporter, uh, Penny Presswell. Ace Reporter, Penny Presswell. <laughs> She's um, in training, everyone. <laughs> She gives a she gives a hard swallow and says, uh, "I'm Beatrice." Beatrice, it's nice to meet you. My name's Paula. Um, Beatrice, <laughs> have you? <laughs> Beatrice, have you? Uh, I can't. Uh-huh. I only have the two names. So uh-huh. It's either Penny uh-huh. or it's Paula. I don't know what to tell uh-huh. you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh sure, God. that tracks. That makes sense. Um, Beatrice, have you um, have you been to one of these before? This is my first time, and I just I don't know. It's it's different. My, I've I've been to a uh, you know just a couple. I I don't like how much preaching they do, but at least they give you food. So. Yeah, that's true. How bad are the sermons? 
Today was a light day, and it's normally a little more intense than that. Ugh. What do they talk about in the sermons? Is there anything useful? Like, Not tips? really. It's just, hey, the gods are pretty cool. You should worship the gods. But, you know, the gods never did that much for me, so. Plus, all the cool gods got outlawed anyway, so. <laughs> Oh, oh, do you have like a favorite? Oh, I'm like just shopping through them right now. So if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. I'm just, you know, I can, I'll take anything I get, right? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I always, uh, I, I, I say the occasional prayer to, uh, to Timora and, uh, try to ward off Bashaba. uh, you know, everybody says the occasional prayer to Timora. Who's, everybody's going to pray to the goddess of luck, right? Uh-huh. These are all words I'm understanding, Beatrice. Timora is the goddess of good luck. Beshaba <laughs> is the goddess of bad luck. Okay. They are both technically outlawed, but nobody bothers enforcing it, really, so long as nobody tries to, like, do widespread worship of them. But they are viewed as too fickle and chaotic uh and thus dangerous to a civilized society okay. but that being said you know there's a huge gambling hall in the city that just about everyone's aware of that is like low-key a temple of timora but okay. it's technically not okay anyway. um do you think that do you think these these gauntlet people are doing a good thing or are they just, I mean, you obviously, you keep coming back, so they must be all right. I mean, they're putting food in my belly, right? Yeah. So you're newly homeless? Yeah. 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 I just fell on some bad luck. Ugh. It was the foreclosures, actually. Oh, dock ward or trades ward? A trades ward about that there's a lot of new homeless people in the city now yeah did you um if you mind me asking <sighs> how long have you been um unhoused oh for years oh yeah i'm sorry for, to hear for that. a really long time where do you where were you born which ward um i don't i don't really know i mean uh i think somewhere in the city but i've been i've been homeless and uh you know, uh, since I was a kid, I'm, I mean. I'm real sorry to hear that. Well, at least I'm used to it. I feel bad for people who aren't used to it. Yeah. But, yeah. hey. Well. Hey, little tip for you. Um, and she leans in real close and says, at night, right? in the winter because it's real cold right now your best bet find a roof that has a chimney sleep against the chimney nice and warm penny literally like penny's literally gonna be shocked at this news and be like sleep against the chimney oh my god thanks. sleep against the chimney is very okay warm. yeah thank you even better if you can find one of those chimneys that has a little bit of an overhang so you can guard yourself a little bit against the uh, yeah. the and rain and snow. And you've been doing this for years? Yes, I've got a couple chimneys that are my favorites, but I won't tell you where they are because then I have to compete. Well, yeah, that's, I, that's fair enough. Well, you've already <laughs> helped me out with that. I actually, I kind of had a question. Um, the reason I haven't really, I mean, I have, I'm newly unhoused, but the reason I was a little skeptical to come is I was hearing some things on the street about people going missing. And I was wondering, is that a thing? Is that, is that just a rumor? Or is this something I should be afraid of? Uh, make a persuasion check for me. Ooh. Now that we're getting to the, the good stuff. The meat and potatoes. 13. You have 13. inspiration. Oh, what does that mean? So D8. you can roll a D8. If you want, if you want, you can add a D8. That's a unnatural 20 now, plus seven. Nice. I mean, yeah, there's rumors that people sometimes disappear after these, but like, 
I mean, we go, people like us go missing all the time. Mm. That doesn't make it right. No, but you, you know, you learn, look, you got to do what you got to do to survive. And I will take eating and, you know, the odd chance that maybe I'll go missing. Yeah. Have you, have you known anyone that's gone missing? No, no. I mean, I mean, yes, but nobody's, nobody that came here regularly that I, that I, you know, talked to, right? Um, the other thing I will warn you, there's this is not, just, just be careful, but, you know, uh, some homeless people like banding together and some of us are very solitary and the solitary ones can be brutish sometimes. So I try to keep my distance in turn. Hmm. Okay. Do you have any, like, do you have any advice on how to make sure I uh, make it through tonight alive? Well, not kidnapped? I, I don't think you're going to get kidnapped. I, I, uh, I think I, it's, it's, a uh, it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's much, I think it's much more likely that, uh, you know, you'll uh, piss off the wrong person and they'll just beat the shit out of you. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell you the number of times that's happened to me, so. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, features, I don't think I have to worry about that. Avoid, avoid, eh, avoid sleeping on streets that are frequented by the police. They will beat the shit out of you as well. The police? Yes. Isn't that illegal? Mm. Who's going to stand up for us? We're homeless. Oh my god. (laughs) Well. Anyway. Yes, there are there are rumors of people going missing. Homeless people go missing all the time, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. I was just worried because I'm pretty strong and capable and very, very healthy. So um <laughs> she's gonna like raise her voice a little when she says uh-huh. that. Uh-huh. Like just you know, she's <laughs> like, you... I can do 15 push-ups without even breaking a sweat. That's well, that, I can do 10 without breaking a sweat, but I can push myself to 15. That's an interesting brag, um, Paula. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, Beatrice. Paula. Uh, no, I, I don't think you have to worry about you know, going to miss anything. All right. Well, thank but you. But if, you if you are worried about it, just, you know, don't sleep. Don't sleep. Okay, thank you. You've given me a lot of good advice, Beatrice, and a lot to unpack here that I'm gonna be thinking about for a long time. But thanks for keeping me company while I ate. Of course. And she also finishes her pizza. It's up in leaves. Good luck out there, Paula. Maybe we'll run into each other at one of these another time. You too. I hope no one beats the shit out of you tonight. Be good night if they don't. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. Or not Jesus, whatever, I don't know. Uh-huh. Pick a God. Tormund Helm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. What's everybody else doing? Is Someone great? looks suspicious outside. Make a perception check for me. Uh, oh, God, I should have my stats up. Uh, it's a 15 plus and stuff. Perception. Oh, 20. Uh, so when the door was thrown wide open and it was that Rodolfo gentleman I described before, you were also able to clock the faint shimmer of illusion magic disguising his appearance. Um, and as everybody entered, he sort of stayed by the door and was sort of watching everybody enter. And his eyes would occasionally linger on a person, um, but but he you know he just seemed like he was standing and greeting people. But you could tell his eyes would occasionally linger on people, including most particularly Bowie. Interesting. 
but he remains outside after and keeps greeting new people as they come. And he he has, you know, he's got uh, alongside him. He's got he's got a couple of other people, both you know, who also uh, appear to be working in the soup kitchen, just standing outside greeting people. Uh, the other two the other two people out there with him are both clearly part of the Order of the Gauntlet Reform Societies. They're handing out pamphlets. He's just kind of standing there and smiling and greeting everybody. Mm -hmm. I want to dip around a corner, cast okay. invisibility, and uh -huh. come and just hang out near them. Yeah. And just watch and listen to him. Yeah. 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 And you hear him, you know, as 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 some of the as some of the folks come up, he's like Greetings, uh, wonderful, wonderful to see you. Uh, come on in, enjoy the food, courtesy of uh, Mr. Diego Maravaldi. And sort of s similar things on that as he goes. Uh, now that you're closer, you are definitely seeing that he is keeping an eye on, on people as they come in. Um, and, you know, again, watches certain people in particular. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't say anything out loud that is out of the ordinary. Great. I will just stay kind of close to him. Okay. Okay. Just keep an eye. Great. All right. Um, anybody else got anything? Um, I just want to... I, I assume Artemis told us about Adam and Simon. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do two things mm. one keep an eye out to see if anybody inside is paying particular attention to anybody in particular mm -hmm. um and then two is find a group of people who are all like a group of people who seem to be regulars and like have been here a few times if i can figure that out make a perception check for me Ooh. Um, 23. 23. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, 23. So with that, um, first of all, you do a scan of the room, see if you can find, um, anybody that looks like they're sort of watching. Um, and you, uh, uh, don't the, the, so you see there's sort of two uh larger gentlemen sort of just chilling in the corner of the room um talking with each other um Janara for reference for you these are the gentlemen that were carrying the boxes for Rodolfo um and they are just standing sort of in the corner of the room off to the side they don't appear to be working the event they just brought in the boxes and they're just hanging out till Rodolfo's ready to leave um but uh, Nix, they are uh, these two gentlemen sort of standing in the corner of the room, um, just sort of keeping a general eye on everything. They, um, uh, uh, one of them uh, sort of notes, um, uh, uh, you know, seems to, uh, again, um, eyes particularly catching taller, uh, uh, more, you know, muscular looking people. Um, so those two are. Okay. Uh, and then you were also looking for a group of people that look like they I come here frequently. I'm editing that slightly. Okay. I'm looking for a group of people that seem to know a lot of other people. Okay. Yeah. There's a table where, where there's like a bunch of, a, like a, like a, like a group of, um, you know, homeless people who are all like talking with each other as if they know each other and they see each other at these things sometimes. Okay. All sort of older looking folks of various ancestries um, enjoying a meal and that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to go over to them and sit down. Okay. And be like, hi! <coughs> Excuse me. They're sickly. <laughs> I was say that yeah, one of them, one of them costs. It's one of the ones that Bowman missed. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Bowman, uh, oh, you didn't heal long. Bowman, do better. Uh, what a jerk. 
a, a, an, an older an older human woman turns to you and says, "Oh, uh, hello, hello." Um, can, can I say here? I'm hi. Go right I'm ahead. I'm Ella Lynn. Um, what what was your name? Ella Lynn. Ella Lynn. I'm Eloise. Hi, that's cool. Um, <laughs> this is my first time here. Well, welcome, welcome. Yes, please have a seat. Thanks. Enjoy some food. You guys seem to be a, a, a social bunch. Yes. Well, you know, we've, uh, we've been coming to these for quite some time, see each other here. A lot of the younger folks think that the way you survive on the streets is by sticking to yourself and not trusting anyone. But those of us who have been doing this for a bit longer know that sometimes banding together is better. So sure, that's what we're doing. Got, got each what other's backs. Yes. Um, so I bet you've seen a lot of people come in and out of these things. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. The only reason I'm I'm even here is because uh, an old buddy of mine told me that there was typically some good food. Um, and do you, do you get a lot of like people recommending this place to others? Uh, we we tell we tell people about this place when we can. I mean, you know, good to have food in your belly. Sure, sure. Um, do a lot of people stick around? I mean, you guys seem to Some know, people but... come, some people don't like the preaching, so they come less regularly. Mm. I think we are the only ones who really come to all of these. <laughs> gotcha. Um, Nix is, like, fighting against her, her desire to recruit these people for her own organization uh -huh. um but uh -huh. she is sticking to the mission but you can see her like battling within herself sure um yeah uh the the buddy of mine i don't know if you know him his name is simon and then i want to insight check okay whatever reaction okay this woman has. what does she say oh simon yes i i saw him a a couple of times larger fellow, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. He didn't come to these very frequently. Finally talked him into coming to one, but I haven't seen him since. Oh, uh, Jesus. I got a 17. Uh, she seems to be telling the truth. Uh, so you also know Simon? I've met him a few times, yeah. Have you seen him recently? No, no. Um... I feel That's like not I that typically... unusual for me, but okay. I only knew I didn't know him that well. Okay. I just feel like do any of the other people at the table react? What was your inside check? 17. Uh no, none of the other people. Um I just feel like they're continuing to chat okay. amongst themselves and different and stuff. I just always see him at this fire with this kid, and I haven't seen Simon. There in a little bit. Well, I'll keep my eye out, and yeah, if I run into you, um, again, I'll I'll let you know if I've seen him. That big city, big That's, city, yes. lots of places for sure. a homeless person to hole up for a little bit. And we are always having to move because you know we can't loiter in one place. And yeah, recently, did you hear? Uh, how long have you been homeless? Oh, I kind of like flit in and out of homelessness mm, i understand i understand um jeremy was like that it was like that too um and she points to like a gentleman like over in line right now but um it, they've started putting like like locking mechanisms over benches oh i have seen those just around and there's some like spikes yeah in areas it's under like overhangs it's really awful yeah um 
I'm just gonna like carry on the conversation yeah. with Ella okay. Mason. Great. I'm gonna like keep trying to see if anybody's sure. like heard of Simon, but I feel like it keeps like yeah. Just yeah. missing. Yeah. Great. Anything else anybody wanted to do during this event? I mean, question to the group. Do we want me to dispel that guy's magic or let things go like normal? Let's act normal. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little time yeah. passes. The event eventually draws to an end. Everybody sort of departs. Uh, they thank you, uh, Flora and uh, Octavia, with um, the name that she gave, which was Blaze. Octavia. Blaze. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, 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 eventually, and they also give a hearty thanks to Rodolfo and say, please. Pass our thanks, as always, on to Mr. Maravaldi, his support. I mean, we've been able to help so many more people thanks to his support. And Rodolfo nods and says, of course, Mr. Maravaldi is nothing if not giving. Um, so you catch that end of the exchange as Ms. as Maravaldi leaves. Now, important question. As who leaves? As Rodolfo leaves. As Rodolfo. Yeah. The guy who works for him. Yeah. Yes. Or is Can I insight in check the DM? <laughs> it's his birthday. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. um, take away your DM inspiration. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm following him. Suddenly. Yeah. Okay. That's right. I'm I tailing him for a little bit. Okay. Not too far because I need to keep it. Okay. Keep an eye on if anyone follows Bowman. Okay. But. Uh, I would say the event went on long enough that your invisibility would have faded, so are you recasting it when you see Rodolfo uh, leave? I mean, I have to, right? I, I was thinking of trying to tail him, too. Right? Yeah. I mean, I can, once I know that it's about to fade, I can um, hide myself somewhere, cast message, and talk to people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll say you definitely can do that, so... You 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 do that like as people are leaving, your invisibility would have faded. So yeah, um, this is before Rodolfo has left officially. Janora, you want to you want to tell him? I'll tell him. All right. Um, scream really loud. I'll be nearby. But scream if, really loud. Like scream loud if if things go. To oh shit. okay okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say the second half of that. Anyway, toodaloo. <laughs> Um, I just tried screaming in front of Rodolfo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. get up in his face. Ah! Yeah. Uh, so what is every where, where what is everybody else doing during this time? Then, if Janar is going to be tailing Rodolfo, um, Artemis is hanging out in the area listening. What's the plan? Is this like a morning breakfast and sermon? Or? It was. It was sort of. It was. It was. Uh. Uh. You know. Uh. About midday. Uh, Bowman should probably act act inconspicuous. Mm -hmm. uh, is probably gonna start just like kind of walking down the street, yeah. begging for money. Yeah. Um. Great. Uh, anybody else? What's everybody else doing? I'm just gonna try to like. Where is most people going? Are they just like they're sort out of here just outside or a few are hanging, hanging around outside? outside, but most people are dispersing at this point. Okay. Um, I'll probably just kind of hang around for a little bit and see what where the gauntlet's going. Like, are they just mm -hmm. packing things up? Yeah, it looks like they... they're just packing things up, but you can stay and watch for a little bit if you want. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, like someone should watch Bowman's back. Yeah, I think I'm gonna follow Bowman. Okay. And uh, the only reason I'm behind him is because I left after him and my legs are shorter. So okay. I'm like trying to catch up but also not okay like are, are you trying to do so stealthily or not no i'm just like why is he so tall okay. this is really okay. inconvenient and i okay. don't want to shout his okay. name and uh, i can't contact him i'm gonna make a person i'm gonna make a i guess a, my passive perception. perception or should i okay make a perception. Be a passive perception what's your passive uh i have it written down somewhere but you could just tell me on this. One. It's a third. It's a thirteen. Okay, you you could probably see Nick glance behind you and see that Nix is hurrying to catch up. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna half my my stride. Great, great. Yeah, Nix is able to catch up with you. <gasps> sorry, sorry about that. Do you find any 
good. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good time? Yeah, super great. Yeah. So you learn yeah. breakfast? You learn anything? It's midday. Oh, okay. It's not breakfast. Um, nothing, nothing really. But I did try to make a little bit more of a scene than I usually do when I cast magic. So uh -huh. we'll oh, I didn't. I forgot to do that. Draw some attention. Um, um, there were. Did I notice those two guys? Did they? watch bowman yes okay their eyes did linger on bowman then i'm gonna tell i'm gonna tell them that yeah there were a couple people checking them out um good janara make a stealth check for me as you leave and try to follow rodolfo who left with the two large guys he came in with 19 19 okay um you very carefully sticking to the shadows, blending it with the crowd, that sort of thing. Follow um, Rodolfo away. He and his two large guys with him, who you haven't heard either of the large guys say anything this entire time. Um, you eventually track them into an alley area. <clears throat> um, Rodolfo stretches um slightly uh shifts his shoulders a little bit um you see uh, uh the shimmer around him is maintaining but uh i uh, you know he he seems to have uh, you know uh, make a perception check for me 23 so the movements the stretches all that stuff was a uh, a well hidden hidden re-upping of whatever illusion magic he has on him. So, uh, the sun uh, is still up, but uh, it's sort of dark in this alley. Uh, and he turns to the to two gentlemen with him and he says, right, so I thought the most promising target was the uh, older half-orc. Saw him Use a little bit of uh, of magic at the beginning. Did you two notice him? They just nod. So, excellent, excellent. Well, you, my friend, and he touches the one on the on the left. Go find out where he's sleeping, if you could. Uh, his form shifts, and in his place, you see a huge, grotesque, uh, fly-like creature with a long proboscis. He touches him again, shifts invisible, and the, you hear a buzzing sound fading away. He turns to the other one. You and I will make sure to collect him when darkness falls. Until then, we should make ourselves scarce. And with that, we'll go ahead and end for the night. Ah. Bum, bum, bum. Thanks for watching, hmm. everybody. Thanks for playing, y'all. Uh, hope you had a good time. And we will pick up here at next time with episode 19. Have a good night. Bye.